Welcome back to Code in 5 Minutes. Today I'm going to be talking about getting information from APIs using Python. So first of all, if you don't already know what an API is, it's basically a tool that allows you to get data from a database and then use it in whatever way you want. Now of course, you could do this with whatever service or website that you use. For example, when you open the weather app, it's going to give you all of that data. But the main advantage using APIs is when you're coding or engineering something. Because it gives you the raw data, you can change it and work with it in whatever way you want. So we're going to be learning in this video how to actually work with these APIs and get data and data uh, from it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now first thing we're going to need is a module called requests. Now requests is a module in Python that allows us to interact with uh, websites and other servers wherever across the world. So what we're going to do is first import requests into our Python file. So this line is basically just going to allow us to uh, import the requests module into our file here. Now once we've done that we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with requests. So first thing you're going to need is some API to work with. Now this is a super simple one. All it's going to do is give you pictures of cute little foxes. Uh, it'll give you a random picture each time and it's more really for demonstration but of course you can take the skill to a much higher level and start working with APIs uh, from all different walks of life. So first of all just go to this link here to access the API. I'll leave it in the description. And now you can see the API itself is available here. Uh, at this URL. Now this is the URL that we're going to need. Now it's a very simple one and doesn't really contain any uh, queries that you can put in it and work with um, but in other APIs you can specify things. So for example uh, what day you want to pull from. For example if you're trying to pull uh, log data you can specify the day that you want to pull it from. Uh, you can specify specific users, genres if you're looking for types of movies for example and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now what we're going to need is just to copy this URL over here and now we're going to actually use it in our file. So what we're going to do is create an object or a variable that's going to store all the content that we get from our uh, page over here. Now we can do this just by creating a normal variable called response. Usually it's what it's called but you can call it whatever you want. And then to actually get the data we're going to say requests.get and then put this data in. So there we go. Now what this is going to do is tell requests to go and get the information from this URL. So once we get the, this it's going to package a whole lot of information and then put it all into this response object. So I'm going to be talking about a few things that you can access with the object. The first thing is the status code. Now whenever you make an HTTP request it's going to return a status code that tells you some information about how the request went. Now the default is 200 or OK which means the response went well and all the information was returned fine. Now you can go and search up an HTTP code table because there are a ton of them and they all have different circumstances but all you have to do to access it is just say response.status underscore code. And what this is going to do is actually get you the status code. So what I'm going to do is print it out right here and we're going to run our file. So I'm going to say uh, python main.py and once we wait for that to run and if you notice it oh whoops gotta put python 3 now if once it's gonna once it takes its time to run and gets everything set up and pulls the information from the site it's going to print out the return code that we got from here and as you can see it's 200 so now let's go ahead and actually start working with our data so the there are a bunch of different ways that you can actually look at your response because there are a ton of different uh, aspects. Some of it is HTML. You can get it in raw format. You can get it in a string formatted for Python needs. But what we're going to be using just to view it quickly is response.text. Now what this is going to do is give us a nice formatted version that we can look at and use. Now it is a string so we won't be able to pull any data from it just yet. But if I go ahead and run this program, you're going to see a string here 
and it prints out this string and it gives us our return data. Now, of course, uh, this is just a normal, it looks like a dictionary here. It is a string, but the reason it doesn't have all those cool HTML elements or that raw, super long format that you'd find from a normal website is because we're working with an API and not um, some other website. So for example, if we pulled from Google, it would have to return image data. It'd have to return headers and all sorts of other things like that. But here the API is just stripping all that down and giving us the bare um, information, the information that we can actually pull and use into our programs. So let's go ahead and just look at this right here. Now, if you look at it, it kind of looks like a dictionary uh, in Python. It has your keys and your values. And this is actually going to be how we're going to work with this is because it's going to we're going to use a specific function to convert this into a Python dictionary and then we can print out uh, certain values and use certain things from this uh, JSON oh well spoiled it there but this object here so what we're going to be doing is using something called the JSON function which is part of requests and in case you didn't know all APIs or most APIs use uh, a language called JSON. Now what JSON is, is just kind of like a standard to uh, communicate API information and it's in the same format that you see here, this kind of dictionary uh, style. So what we're going to do is instead of response.txt, we're going to use response.json. Now when we print this out, it's going to show us a, um, a dictionary this time. Now it may not look like it, because it looks pretty identical, but you can see that there are a few changes here. There are some uh, single quotes instead of double quotes and things like that. Now you won't notice the difference here, but the biggest uh, difference between printing the text and printing the JSON is with our JSON here, this is an actual dictionary that we can work with. So what I'm gonna do is because this returns a new dictionary, it doesn't just modify it or print it out, we're going to uh, create a new variable called fox, and we're gonna set this to response dot json and what this is going to do is get all of our our dictionary and actually put it in this uh, fox object now this is our dictionary and from here we can actually take any of the data that we want and print it out so for example one of our keys is image so if I just go ahead and say print fox image like that oops, gotta put the uh, quotation marks. If I go ahead and do this, it's going to look for the image key in our dictionary and print its value. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And if you see here, we have a string which links to our uh, image. So it may not look exactly the same, but that's only because we're changing the request every single time. And of course, it's called random fox, so it's going to change it up. Now, we've only been printing things here, but that's not the only thing you can do. You can work with this data in all sorts of ways. You can use it in equations or math programs, or you can uh, build up a data visual visualization tool, for example. Once you get the data, it's all yours. Now, this is just the very bare bones of requests. There is a lot more and a lot more you can specify here uh, to work with APIs to their full potential. But I hope this really introduced you to the concept of working with APIs uh, with Python and hopefully in the future you can start to get to know the request module a little better and start working uh, with APIs in a much more efficient and extensive manner. Alright, let's move on.